Undercover Carson, secret agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. tracked down two of the six scientists believed to share the secret of this grim weapon of war. But in each case, a certain Chaka had been there first. Now we were preparing to set out on his trail to visit some ancient ruins in the jungle fastness, said to be the abode of the mysterious lights that never go out. Leaving Rio for a spell would involve leaving the charms of Hetty Fitzhenry, Helena Jansen and Faye Corelli. I hoped it would also mean leaving behind their intrigues. But at least two things had to be done before I could depart. A seaplane of some sort had to be chartered, and the faithful Angelo, Sir Giles Davenport servant, had to be declared fit for the journey and all the hardships it might entail. Well, Carson, I had Dr. Mendel look at him again today. Ah, the black-hearted rogue's getting that murderous smolder back in his eye. <laughs> had it yesterday, I thought, Sir Giles. Remember when he told us his renegade relative was no longer walking this earth? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you didn't press him for explanation. Carson, Angelo was something of an artist in such matters, and as such he prefers not to be questioned on his uh, technique. Mm. Uh, you follow? <laughs> expect so, sir. Yeah, he's quite a fellow, as I warned you from the outset of this undertaking. However, mm. we did think he'd blotted the copybook. That's all water under the bridge now. Though I do feel badly about it. Why so, sir? Forever doubting the fellow. Forever doubting him for one ungrateful moment. I might say, sir, you're a trifle indulgent where Angelo's concerned. Ah. <laughs> you're getting your own back, eh? <laughs> so, sir. The fact remains, Carson, that you are too much of a Sir Galahad where women are concerned. Ah, but think of them, sir. Hetty, Faye, Helena. Ah, man wouldn't be human otherwise. My dear chap. Let's not forget that we're on the track of something quite inhuman in conception. Yes, that's true, sir. And we are faced with the most ruthless opposition. And you've got more to contend with in this new phase of our operation. The wild backwoods. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, about the seaplane. I assured you, old chap, I'd have no trouble in chartering an ocean liner. The matter's well in hand. Oh, it is? Oh, good. However, it'll mean taking a third party along. The pilot. Mm, pity about that. Yes, I agree. It is awkward, but the fellow seems to be reliable enough. Oh, so you've got as far as chartering the bus. Huh. I may give the impression of being something of a dawdler, but when it's time to get cracking, I do. Yes, sir, I've noticed it. That's why I keep you in background when fair sex in offing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, Carson, old codger like me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, about this fellow. Well, he's an American. Big fellow. Forthright, even to the point of being rude. Uh, Nagel's his name, Herman Nagel. Yeah. What's his background? I believe he's been knocking around the world quite a deal in many wild cat aviation ventures, but always missed out somehow. Uh, my explorer friend, uh, Julius Grant, has been very helpful in that regard. Oh, helpful and a lot more. Look at this map he gave us. Uh, now, these are the three locations where ancient ruins may be found adjacent to suitable landing spots for seaplanes. Indeed. Uh, all within eight or nine hundred miles of Rio de Janeiro. And well within the arm of the Rio Sao Francesco. Mm, quite a river, Carson. Yes, quite a wilderness. I feel so. But it's intriguing, you know. Laden with legends. You hear stories of white Indians and so on. And to say nothing of strange lights that never go out. <laughs> yes, that's so. Then well, why should it be so very unusual? Well, what the dickens... I mean the, uh, the ancients possessing some knowledge of atomic power. Well, according to Julius Grant, that would account for the lights. It's uh, quite a fashionable theory at present, I'm told. Mm. I wonder why this Chaka chap went hunting him. Well, I've pondered on that, and I find two reasons. One, of course, that he's a scientist, and naturally he'd be interested in this phenomena. The other, well, perhaps one of the other missing scientists has set himself up somewhere in the region. Yes, I've been thinking of that. There's no knowing what you might find, Carson. Quite an adventure. Hmm. I envy you. Yeah, pity you can't come along, sir. Yes. Yes. But someone must hold the fort here. 
Ed, uh, that brings up another point. We must set up some means of keeping in touch. Well, I have a pair of pipes that can handle that, you know, sir. No, no, Carson, your beloved pipes have their purposes, but in this case... Oh, Sir Giles, what about the uh, miniature transmitter and receiver jobs? Well, they just haven't the range, man. Yeah, I suppose not. Only walkie whispers at best of times. Walkie whispers. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be frank. But um, what have you in mind? Oh, nothing very sensational. Neat, powerful and portable. I'll give you full instructions and the set before you depart. Oh, good. And now, uh, the instructions read the plan. Uh, where's it moored? Oh, yes. I dare say you're interested to look her over. Yes, the plan and Mr. Herman Nagel. Most. <laughs> It was a glorious day, as days in lovely Rio can so often be. The bay was superb, and for once, I found myself relaxing on the drive to the small base where the plane was moored. Took little finding, and friend Herman Nagel. I guessed it was he by the regular grind of his big jaws he kept chewing at a wad of gum. He tilted a grimy jockey cap to the back of his head, put his great hands on his hips, and looked at me sourly. Yeah, sure, Mr. Carson. I know all about you. Hmm. Not all, I trust. All I've been told. Anyway, there's your crate riding about 50 yards out. Hmm. Ah, yeah, should do the job. If you mean she don't look anything fancy, say it. But she's certified sound and she'll get you where you aim to go. Yeah, that's your department. And that's a handy line. I figure we ought to get our department straightened out right here and now. I don't know what you're up to or why, and I don't want to know. You mind your business, I mind mine. It suits me perfectly. Well, this might be a joy ride, or it might be something else. I'm not asking. And I don't want you to... You asking why I'm in this part of the world and where I dump my wife and kids, okay? Okay. I think we'll get along fine. I hope so, Mr. Carson. Yes, however, I uh, do notice somewhat disapproving glint in your eye. Guess I don't like the pipe. Hmm? Oh, this one. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Afghan. Sort of in the blast furnace class. Mm, has a number of uses. Uh, in fact, I think I'll give you a short demonstration. You see that packing case about 15 yards away? Sure. And you see the letter 8 stenciled on it? Yeah. Yeah, but say, what the heck are you doing with that pipe? Just aiming it. There's something concealed in false stem underneath. Watch now. Well, don't, I'll be... Don't try that again. Hey, <laughs> hey, a dame hiding behind that case. Miss Helena Jensen. Know her? Shucks, no. I never knew she was there. Well, I guess a fella would be doing mighty swell to know her. Some cookie. Will you please put that abomination away, Mr. Carson? Well, she knows you, huh? So, all clear now, Helena. Miss Jensen, if you please. Boss, she's flying fighting colors in them eyes, uh... I'll mosey off a bit. Thanks. Oh, you gave me a dreadful scare. Whatever did you think you were doing? I'm oh, just demonstrating pipe. Ugly thing. <laughs> I'm most annoyed with you. Oh, my dear, we're back in character again. I don't know what you mean. Well, for the svelte Miss Jensen to be hiding behind a packing case, that, that was indeed out of character. I happened to follow you down here. Oh, I thought I noticed a sports car following. It was just an impulse. Rather schoolgirlish, I fear, now that I've been jolted back to earth. What's all this about? Got some pipe you want me to see? An ancient weapon or some such? I did think of using that as a pretext. But, Bruce, you did give me a terrible scare. Ah, the softness. The woman's human. I... I suppose I am. Oh, my dear, you're, you're trembling. Bruce, I... I'm acting like a fool. Fool? You're acting divinely. I like this softness. And the uh, sun dancing off the water does something to you. And me too, I'm afraid. Well, I'll be to the point. I've got a sudden urge to kiss you. That would be most unwise. In spite of all the open air. I wouldn't try, Bruce. Why not? Because I'd be forced to do something that might not meet with your approval. And that? Slap your face. <laughs> well, come to think of it, wouldn't mind that either. No, Bruce, not... Let me go. Quick. What is it? Someone coming. He hasn't seen me yet. I must go. Yeah, but who, who is Don't it? trust him, Bruce. Don't trust him. Don't trust him, huh? Nagel? Hey, 
Skipper! What now? Jocelyn, you old dog! Roger Deauville. Now, what brings him here? And what makes Helena so scared? <laughs> Roger Deauville, schoolmate of mine in England. He came swaggering towards me, bronzed, good-looking, all smiles. But as he came, I recalled that I'd introduced him to Helena in her antique shop in Rua de Uvidor. And though both had acted as if unknown to each other, I'd sensed that this was not so. Moreover, how'd he found me here? How, Bruce? I'm just wondering. Now listen, Mr. Carter. I'm in the travel business. Well, what difference does that make? I hear about people traveling. Oh, I see. Oh, well, no peace for the wicked. Now, what's the stunt? No stunt, old chap. Doing a survey for the company. The meat crowd? So. But how did you run me down? <laughs> oh, I have contacts in this game. Yes, yeah, seems so. But uh, when I heard... Well, as a friend, I thought... What the blaze are you looking around like that for? Where's that big fellow? What big fellow? Nagel. Well, he was here a minute or two ago. Sorted off. Good. You know him? I know of him, Bruce. That's why I went looking for you, just as soon as I heard you chartered that broken-down crate of his. Well, I'm told it's certified. Should be certified insane. Really? And as for Nagel himself... Well, Bruce, I don't like much fear, but for old time's sake and all that... Oh, I understood. He's not to be trusted. How so? Bruce, it uh, would be breaking a confidence if I went into detail, you know, uh, ethics. But I hear things. And you hear that Herman Nagel isn't to be trusted? I'll take my tip. Don't trust him. Strange, you know. Don't trust him. Seems I've heard those words before. Thanks, Roger. I won't. <laughs> now, first and foremost, I decided not to trust Roger Deauville. But what was going on now? Helena warns me against Deauville, then Deauville against Herman Nagel. Someone didn't want us to take off on this new lead in Operation Death Ray. Mm -hmm. 